nice summer evening here in Pittsburgh. And here's what we should be doing, fishing, Warren Market. Now, this is a site out our front windows at Cuca Lake, one direction. And then we can take our little paddle boat over here to look at other people's boats. So, anyways, this is more interesting than the market. As we can see, this market is just nothing still. I mean, each time it bottoms, we're hoping for a breakout or even a breakdown just so we can get some type of action and make just as money going long as we can short. But there's nothing as we can see. So the reason I keep pointing this out is if you're not making money right now, don't let it get to you. It's uh, This is not a market to really be trading. So I was looking to make some good money this month, and that was just basically flat. Every time I put on a good trade, something else would go bad after two days. And uh, So now, that you don't blame on the market. What you want to look at is what is the market telling us? And if the market keeps telling us it's not going anywhere in a hurry, then that's the message we should be getting. We should be... Uh, uh, setting up our trading accordingly, which is, if this market really isn't going anywhere, maybe if we're trading, it's got to be very short-term, I mean, almost on a day trade basis, or don't trade at all. Just use this time to go relax for a little bit and learn how to trade candlesticks. <laughs> so even though the Dow was uh, down, it came up to the top end of the range, and so this is the information that is vital to or extremely important to candlestick investors is the Dow or the Nasdaq was down 17 points. That's what a lot of people are going to look at. But when they opened this today on that bad news about Greece, look what they did after they opened it. We could see in the instantly that there was buying going on versus uh, selling going on. So I don't, yeah, I don't know whether you would really call this rolling over. I still think we're just still in the same sideways trend which tries to find the bottom and then goes back up to the top, then comes back down. So, And when it does it, I mean, that would be a good trade. If we could trade from here back up to here and then back down again. But we're even seeing on an intraday basis where they go down, they go up. They go down, they go up. There's really nothing to get your teeth into. So when it becomes that discouraging and you really can't, get your teeth into anything, that's what the market is telling you. It's not a good place to be trading right now. So kind of if you're doing anything, it should be on a very short-term basis. And if you're not doing anything, you're not missing anything. So this is why I always tell people when the markets aren't doing anything where you can put the probabilities in your favor, go fishing, go play golf, go weed the garden, whatever. Uh, that does two things for you. It doesn't keep you here in front of the screen trying to eke out, uh, well, even credit spreads right now are, I mean, it's a tough, it, it's tough because the, the prices are just moving uh, whipsawing. So it's not like there's a trend that you, or even a, a stability in prices. Let me take a look here. Oh, even crude oil got whacked today. And so this is why, and I'm kicking myself for not being in this today, because we knew if it opened lower, what type of formation was it going to do? It was going to do a bearish doji sandwich. In this case, it did a big bearish doji sandwich. So, and how, how was it getting there? Kind of this rollover, and then they whacked it. So... This is a perfect setup. If we understand what the dumpling top is, which is ver uh, opposite of the fry pan bottom, we know which way they'll be going, especially if we do a doji sandwich, which you know what what to expect. Let me see if I can do this. 
right here, we knew what to expect. If it opened lower, it was probably breaking this level, putting us in a position where we can make a good, uh, a good trade to the downside. Let's see. I'm still in lean hogs. Backed off a little bit today, but because it was coming out of these dojis with a nice big move, what's our anticipation? At least coming back up here to the to the 50. And I'm doing a, a little promo right now on how to use your targets, which is very simple. How much room do we have for the first resistance level? Well, we're, we've got a nice bullish signal. And our stochastics tell us we've probably got some more upside. So it could come back up here. Now, is that the only target? Well, if I can identify that there's been a big downtrend, all you have to do is flip or put on your Fibonacci retracement numbers, which means we are right now at the 38% retracement. If it goes through there, next target is here. If it goes through there, we should be heading up to the... Uh, uh, heading up to the 50, which is also the 62% retracement. Let's see, somebody's pinging prior to last week, back to 1965. So anyways, now we don't use these as our targets. We use these as potential targets that tell us, all right, if we start seeing sell signals at this level or this level, that's a good indication that there's that's where other people that are watching it are starting to take their profits. And here's a case of, look how far away we got from the uh, T-line on soybeans. Now it's pulled back. Now we're watching to see what it does once it gets back to the T-line. And I don't know what the other ones have done. Let me see. Wheat. Wheat already pulled back to the T-line. Now you want to be watching this. It did a left-right combo today. This makes for a very good entry point, whether you're trading stocks or commodities or anything. See a bullish signal. Stochastic's curling up. We can see the potential of a J-hook pattern. If I was looking at this to buy, what would be my buy stop? Very simple. The close. If it came back up through there, that tells me that the next cycle or the next time frame, the uh, profit taking's over, they're still buying the signal that we would expect uh, has occurred and was looking now for confirmation. Uh, let's see. Gold just does not provide anything that would tell you there's anything dramatic going on in gold prices and same scenario with silver. Silver might be doing some bottoming action. Let me do this. That's an inverted hammer. There might be a bounce in silver, but it still has to fight this downtrending channel. If it breaks through there, we know obviously where our target should be, back up here to the to the uh, 50. Uh, let's see, the dollar is still picking up some strength. Ever since your big cradle pattern here, you're in that 45 degree. Opposite for the euro, euro ever since kind of the bearish cradle pattern, they haven't been able to get back up above the, uh, the T-line. However, if you took your, this is why you want to be able to see what type of patterns are setting up. You drew a line, whoops, got it right through these bottoms and right through these tops, whoops. You can see you got kind of a wedge formation in progress. So one of two things should happen. If it holds this line, they are probably bringing it back up here. Not a big trade, but at least you know you'll be in the right direction. If they break this line, now you know your dumpling top is working, that there's probably going to be a 
good little downdraft at that point. So this is why you want to recognize your patterns and your signals and what happens with the signals right at a breakout point of a pattern. See what type of uh, direction you're going to get. Oh, let's see. Ten year bonds trying to bottom out a little bit here. Let's get rid of that, whatever that is. And notice that they got through this downtrending channel today. So you might see a little bit of up move, which will basically means your interest rates are going to continue down uh, even further. Not even further, but stay down here at these low levels. Uh, we did the dollar. We did gold. Uh, oh, went short coffee today because... We can have kind of observe the obvious. The obvious is, let's get rid of that. We've got kind of a trend line coming down through here. Did a doji 50 where it's failed before, and then did a doji sandwich to the downside. Where is our next likely target? Well, just kind of watching that if this is kind of your downtrend, and you can pretty much draw a parallel line on the, here, this is this is the likely target. Oh, no, it's on, oh, I forgot the transports. Transports, still nothing to tell us there's been any turnaround as far as support. You are getting a flat, indecisive trading, which should tell you to watch out because you're in the oversold area. That maybe they're basing in here. What would prove, or what would show a reversal? If they brought it back up through the T line, that would give us kind of that cradle pattern. Where would be our next target? Probably this downtrending channel. And the Russell. Russell did kind of a belt hold. Uh, in what I want to say. A, you're, it's not anything telling us there's a true reversal yet, at least showing when they opened it lower today, they brought it right back up. So that was another point I wanted to make, was that when you're in a uh, in a downtrend, and then you have a bad day like today where they're gapping it down, you're already in, a, in the oversold area, and where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. So that gap down open, instead of panicking and getting out, that's where you start watching to see if that's where the buyers start coming in. Now, I say that's where you start watching. Back in the good old days before candlesticks came along, I would have been one, the one jumping out on the open, thinking, man, it's getting killed. Let's get out of this. Now at least I know that very visually I can see when they open it what they're doing right after they open. And in this case, they were starting to buy immediately. That along with the, uh, uh, whoops, Oh, with the NASDAQ, same scenario. Told us that they were buying immediately on the open. Okay, what else we got? I think it was Coco that I closed out today. Because what did Coco have to do to stay in it today? That's not what I wanted to do. This is what, what Coco had to do to stay in it. We definitely wanted to see it open positive, telling us they were staying up above the T line. They brought it back up, but they couldn't get it back up above the T line. So is this a very strong chart? Well, right now, we're below the T line and our stochastics are heading down. This, this to me, tells me maybe they could take it up. But when you put that maybe in there, it's the maybe's there because these are going the wrong direction. And there isn't really any signs of any great strength coming in yet. So why stay in a chart uh, when there's a maybe? And so I flipped out of uh, cocoa over into coffee. 
well, Shuzman's. Shorted coffee, because what did this chart tell us? At least we could recognize what was happening here. There was a, re a support level, but we were looking at a doji sandwich. And how long do you stay with a trade that's working well? You keep an eye on your 10-minute uh, chart to see whether they, they start taking it back up. A little bit worrisome right here. And it confirmed they have closed out the position, but it popped right back down again uh, within that next 10 minute uh, 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 time frame. So again, this is where when you're trading on a shorter time basis, first of all, you take a look to see what your daily chart is doing and which way the trend should be go over or going overall. Then you can go to your 10 minute chart. That's a 60-minute chart. We're right. Same scenario here. Once it came down through, again, it would have been worrisome here. But then they took it right back down again. Then when they get this close to the end of the day, I'm not too concerned because if this is what it's done all day long, and this is what it's doing in the last hour. What's that basically going to tell you about the uh, daily chart? But the daily chart is still going to be down here near the low end of the trading range, creating that type of signal. Might have a little candle or a little shadow underneath it, but nothing to tell you that this wasn't a big selling day making the uh, doji sandwich. Okay, some of the ones that we're trading in. Again, I was, uh, wasn't picking on Trader Don this morning. I was just kind of illustrating what I would have normally have done and had done many times through the years. But prior to the T-line, with this opening lower, stochastics not really turning down yet, I would have probably said, ah, it's time to get out. I've got a doji followed by a gap down. Um, Oh, okay, good. I'm glad you said that, Don, because we'll go to the next next element. That if you get stopped out for whatever reason, or well, the stop was down below the T-line, and it starts coming back, once again, the, I usually get, I get knocked out of a trade at least two or three times, I say twice anyways on average, out of a trade that gets me out, and then I have to come back in. If you get out, it's because at some point you decided um, that this was not the right place or this is if you set your stop, it should have been on the basis that there was a reason to get out, whatever that reason was. But if you see it turn around and come back up, what was the analysis of being in this in the first place? You were probably in a fry pan or a J-hook pattern. And we had a strong little morning star signal, left-right combo, gap up. So... If they open it lower and then they start it back up, oops, somebody did. Uh, and they start it back up, what's it doing with our overall chart? It's telling us they're supporting on the support level and they're still buying. So um, so this is a perfect example. If you get stopped out, and again, I wouldn't be uh, concerned about getting, all right. about getting stopped out. Now, it used to be that when I got stopped out down here, I'm not going to buy back in because they got me out. Now they're trying to get me back in, and as soon as I get back in, what are they going to do to me? which everybody thinks that the market is going to uh, act against them, that if you start buying back in, they turn it right around and get you again.
So again, what is the after getting coming out and seeing them come back in? What does that tell us? Tell us they weren't told us that we weren't going to be going back below the T line. That our J hook pattern was still in progress. So I'm kind of uh, stressing this information because this is what happens to a lot of people, and I say a lot of people. Uh, is they come out, and I say a lot of people because that was usually me, and wouldn't go back in. Even though my pattern still looked good, wouldn't get back in because they faked me out and they weren't going to get me back in where they could fake me out again. So uh, if you come out of a position, and again, this is if you do the simple logical math, but if you get stopped out and closed it out at 8.78, and bought back at 940. I'm just picking out a number. All right, so you missed out on 60 cents, but you weren't buying this for a 60 cent move. You were buying this based on probably a four and a half point move. So if you missed out on 60 cents, you got out when it was time to get out. You got back in when it told you it was still you're supposed to be in it. Uh, I would buy this back on positive trading tomorrow. Because why would that tell us? That tells us that this J hook pattern is still in progress. Can you show us any good shorts, either short or long? Can you show us any good? Well, that's what we're working on right now. Yeah. Oops, hold on. That's good. All right, so some of the other charts that we're following. PTX was one that was setting up earlier with a scoop type pattern, kind of fizzled. But now we got the bullish engulfing signal. Still has the potential of a rough scoop pattern. Um, at what point do I know it is trading positive? Are you talking about the market? Well, you no, know, you're usually trading whatever individual stock. Um, so on, uh, let's see, PTX, if you own this, you stay long. You should be out of this one because it closed back here. Now you can get ready to buy it back. But at this point, I would probably be more apt to see if they can eventually get it up through the 50. If they get it up through the 50, now you know you definitely your uh, scoop pattern is con confirmed. And GYP, what was the question? You were buying options. How far out uh, time-wise? I usually go to the closest one that still has plenty of time, which is right now the Julys. Today is July 6th. Oops. In two weeks from now, here's expiration on the 17th. So you still have two weeks. And what is our expectations? We're expecting this to move right now. So your best leverage is buying the closest one two weeks out. Um, and uh, back to you, Trader Don. Uh, what point is trading positive? Well, we can see, and again, this is based upon, we can see what the graphics are on a candlestick chart immediately. But once they opened it and they... Uh, Wobble it in here, and then you can start seeing the green forming again as a traded positive above where it opened. Oh, uh, uh, Don, that goes back to what is the overall market doing? Yes, if if I see a, let's say for example, and I'm going to use this as an example. Let's say right now I'd be buying. SGYP if it trades positive. So if I get up in the morning and the pre-market futures are back down here, that's going to kind of make me hesitate, meaning I'm going to sit and watch to see what is happening on this one. If it opens down here in this, this area, that's telling me, ah, I don't know if the bulls are there or not. On the other hand, 
uh, if the uh, market opens or the market opened way down like we saw it, and this opened right here, I'd watch to see whether it opens and they start backing it off, or if it opens, they start trading positive. So what I I'd be more hesitant about buying uh, immediately, meaning the first minute, two minutes, five minutes, if the market is still heading down. I want to see that there's still buyers coming into this. On the other hand, if we wake up and the pre-market futures are trading up here, and it looks like we're going to have a positive day, and we can see that they're opening this one up in this range, yes, I'll probably buy within the first minute or two with the anticipation that if the market is going to act strong after what we could see would be a potential reversal signal, a hammer signal, and they're opening up positive, yeah, that's a combination that says, yeah, they're, it's time to be buying. So if this opened down here, I'd watch maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes to see whether they were still buying the stock. If it opened up here, the markets in general, then I'd be watching this one to see whether I want to be buying within the first minute, two minutes, five minutes or so. Okay, let's see what else we got here. All right, and then there's other chart patterns that we know. Remember what chart patterns are. There's still the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. So we can see kind of in this fry pin bottom, J-hook type pattern, uh, that they were buying today with great enthusiasm, which the pattern, which we recognize, the fry pan bottom, uh, classic J-hook pattern, this tells us they were still buying even though the market was pretty sluggish today overall. That means there's something still going on here that is creating this big pattern. And that's, that's why I keep stressing that you want to know what your, first of all, what your signals are telling you, and then what type of patterns they're in. Halo, another one that opened lower, but immediately started trading positive. And what did we need to see to stay in this today? That it better close up above the T-line. Where do I find the recordings of the chats? Uh, Brian, they're on the members area someplace, and they're probably called member chats. If you are, have a hard time finding them, just email Abraham at Candlestick Forum. Um, and uh, he'll get you the right link. So this is where, again, you observe the obvious. There was our little breakout of a kind of a little right pan bottom. And notice what it hasn't been able to do. Closed here. I may have closed out the position here, but I may have bought it back right here. So if I own this position from 16 to whatever this was, 21, got out at, let's say, uh, 21 and, a, let's say, 21. I don't mind buying back at 21.40 because I could see what type of pattern it was doing. It was setting up a little J-hook, and what's my next criteria if I buy back in? I stay long, so you see a sell signal, and a close back below the T-line. Uh, we recommended SPWH here the last couple of days. Because where, what was it doing? It's kind of doing that little scoop pattern. The day it was scary, open lower, but notice what it did exactly or right after the open. started coming right back up. Is this still one to buy? You had a bullish engulfing, and where did it close? Right smack dab on the resistance level. If this opens positive tomorrow, what's it basically telling us? It's confirming the bullish engulfing signal and telling us this resistance level is not acting as a resistance anymore. Uh, ANTH got a little sluggish here in the last few days, but now is back on the watch list because you've had a morning star signal, an indecisive pullback, and a bullish engulfing. So if it starts trading positive, what do you have on this chart? You'll have your fry pan bottom, J-hook pattern, the classic pattern. And what, where could this move to? Well, if it moved from can't see, four and a half, five and a half to ten, four and a half points. It tells, it tells us that we could be moving up toward the uh, 13, 1350 area. Nubo. 
There's your classic fry pan bottom, trying to do a J hook pattern. There's your bullish engulfing consolidation. They couldn't get through the T line, which is where what our confirmation was for the last couple of days. However, today they did another bullish engulfing. So you got a bullish engulfing, button its head up against the T line. Another bullish engulfing, telling you the T line is not acting as a resistance. Becomes a high probability uh, positive trade sit setup. Uh, we recommend ZSPH. ZSPH. Because notice this is a. Uh, notice what they're telling us. They were telling us they were buying immediately as it hit the uh, the 50. Kind of a morning star signal. Then what happened the next day? They gapped it up through the downtrending channel and the T line. What did that basically tell us? We had our, our morning star signal followed by a gap up, breaking a resistance level. If this is wave one, this is wave two. Where did wave three start? Right smack dab off the uh, support level going into wave three. Uh, JD, I'll get to all the individual ones. Um, yeah, we'll get to all of them. Don't worry. Uh, Nordic, another J-hook pattern. And again, this is where you observe the obvious. It's time to take profits. And again, this is because of our simple trading rule. The further away you move from the T-line, notice how it was relatively close to the T-line until up here. It started moving away. That's where you start taking profits and then seeing whether they're going to do a J-hook or whether they're going to continue right on down. But that that one of the indicators for taking profits is the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability that they're going to come back and test that T-line. SRNE, after this big move, our best friend move, more than likely you're going to be in a 45 degree, which means you can stay long on this as long as it doesn't close back below the T-line. Uh, PRTA is another one that we've been following in the options room. It's looking like it's trying to set up for its next move up. Um, even though it closed below the T-line, notice where it didn't move. It didn't move away from the T-line. Now we have a bullish engulfing signal. If this opens positive, what do we got? We've got the break of this little downtrending channel putting us into the next wave to the upside. Uh, could you give any, give again the link? All right. Yeah, they've got the links in the DYAX. You can see the double bottom. You can see kind of the little J-hook pattern. Today there was a hammer signal. And what they tell us today, that they weren't going to close back below the T-line. I'd keep an eye on this one. Uh, some of the biggies, like Netflix. Also, just barely climbed up above the T-line today with a little left-right combo. If it opens positive, it's con confirming the left-right combo, number one. And two, it's telling us this uptrending channel is still in progress. And Amazon uh, also kind of illustrated that these stocks are just flat as pancakes, just like the market. There's really nothing that you can... Uh, really sink your teeth into on anything that's really moving strong. Um, we do have some shorts that are acting well. Uh, this is the nice thing about the chat room, though, is somebody out there, in this case I think it was David L., picked up OPK because it was coming out of a fry pan bottom. Doing our double doji, notice what it did. It used the T-line for its support and started right back up. High probability that's going to be in the right right direction. Uh, P, P, Y, Pep Boys. All you can do is stay long on this one as long as it doesn't close below the T-line. Facebook, even though it hasn't been a good trader recently, has now got kind of that J-hook pattern in progress. So if you like Facebook, you can be buying this one based on this little J-hook pattern. Notice what it came out of, this little slow curve uh, to the break breakout area. And this is why you want to watch because if you can see the slow curve and they gapped it up the next day, where'd they gap it up? Number one, it would have been a trend kicker. 
and two is breaking through this level usually a uh, uh, creates a very strong quick price move and that's the type of uh, trade setup that I look for especially if you're trading options um, you hit right at the right time uh, as far as your timing is concerned so we've had a big flat move in a or EHTH except today we've got your best friend signal that broke out through this level that's telling me there's a new dynamic in this one probably could hit up as high as a 200 day moving average NVIV there's your J hook pattern I think that was a bearish candle but it was a hammer and they gapped it up makes this very simple if they open this positive more than likely they're going to come up here to the top of the channel and go 45 degrees off of there now I say more than likely is because once you start identifying or seeing what the patterns are doing what your trend is doing becomes a lot more uh, oh, easy easier to uh, assess where your price movements are going to go based upon what human nature usually does in a in a price trend so here's a morning star signal bullish engulfing on AG EN another one that I wouldn't be afraid to be buying on positive trading tomorrow because we've got this little J hook type pattern setting up which makes the top of this channel are a target or even this as a target still warrants about a 15 percent uh, upside potential see is this new link new link this is where the bobble becomes pretty important the bobble is notice where we had our buy signal right smack dab off the 200 day moving average a bullish harami telling us the selling has stopped then you had your doji sandwich where's your first resistance potentially here at the uh, T line so you watch to see what happens here at the T line had this closed over here below the T line that would have told me all right we're still in a downtrend close out the position on the other hand they open it lower and immediately started taking it up what becomes our next target the 50-day moving average what do we have up here an evening star signal telling us we're kind of in a bobble they're pulling back they didn't pull back too far now we've got another buy signal that's also creating kind of a j-hook pattern and what happens if this opens positive tomorrow be confirming our bullish engulfing signal and telling us that this downtrending channel is not acting as resistance anymore and it's trading up above the uh, uh, the 50 day moving average and PTN good looking chart wave one wave two morning star signal bullish engulfing Stochastics coming up has everything in the making for a positive trade. MDCO. Anytime you see these big, huge reversals, this told you that it was time to close out the position. A shooting star. Now you have kind of that big booster signal. They sold it off and reversed it. I would suspect they're going to bring it back up to the top of the channel and move 45 degrees off of there. Uh, a few more that look good, and then we'll get to some short positions. Kind of a little cradle or a scoop pattern setting up on FOMX. Another one that can be bought on positive trading. You just watch to see what it does once it gets to the 50, which would be this downtrending channel. Then you see what it does right here, which would be the handle. But you could kind of expect a uh, possible scoop pattern, which would give you a good, strong slingshot effect to the upside. And PR, uh oh, who wrote this one? Ah, this is B R L I. Nice fry pan bottom. A X L L. Now what happens, what's, what's our thinking on this one? Why is this a good looking chart? Because it gapped up, did a doji above the previous day's open. If it opens positive tomorrow, what do you want to be doing? 
Well, we know that it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. There's a good possibility they're going to take it up, which now creates your flutter kicker signal, which would mean your next target is up here at the 50. And because it is a strong reversal signal, it might go back up through this resistance level. So you always want to look. Uh, oh, it failed at the T-line, but it still did a potential flutter kicker setup. So just because it did a doji today, remember our simple rule of doji. It's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. And if they open positive, that means we're going to have a positive trade. And if we have a positive trade, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> God bless. Um, if it opens positive, we're probably going to have a positive trade. And if you took out the little flutter, you basically have a kicker signal. Uh-oh, I'm going to sneeze again. Ah. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. OGM or OMG, best friend gap up. Look for more upside. ANY. There's your bobble. Strong move, we're going to move to, right to the uh, 50, or I'm sorry, the 200. Indecisive trading, it pulls back. Where does it pull back to? The T-line. Couldn't close below the T-line. Now you have a T-line crunch, pushing it right back up through the 200, the resistance level. Makes this very simple. If it opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying immediately because they're going to take this up as a J-hook pattern. They're breathing that wheat dust. Yep. I don't know what you just got. Radis. Notice your fry pan bottom. Doji sandwich breakout. You stay in this as long as you got that 45 degree in progress. DY. Somebody pointed this out the other day. Another one that had kind of a, a best friend. Now you've got a doji sandwich. You stay long on this one. That's a good-looking chart still. And HFC wanted to point this out because you had the fry pan bottom. It started the uptrend with a doji gap up. Now you've broken through the resistance level. And this is good, solid trend movement. When they gap it down or open lower and then start bringing it right back up, that tells you the bulls are still in control and the profit takers are out of the way. Oh, I'm still trying to keep from... All right, so on the uh, short side, we shorted uh, CM, CM a few days ago and reiterated the short uh, today that if it opened lower, we want to stay short because that makes pretty much the 200-day moving average our likely target. Why is this a good trade? Because notice what moved it down through the resistance level. A doji gap down. Your best friend to the downside is HFC. Uh, probably not. It's not that far away from from the T line. I don't know whether. Yeah, if you buy it here, though, you got to be a little bit more nimble because obviously here was the spot to buy it. And it's moved up another 7% uh, since that, that, that time. We shorted Wabe here because of this breaking down through the T-line. And then they had this big failure day. This is what I call the scary day, where we were short. It came up. And you can do one of two things. You close it out if it came up through the previous day's open and then reshort it as it came back down. Fortunately or unfortunately, I didn't have time to see it come up. It was already on its way back down when I saw it. But when it closed down here, what did that basically tell you? Told you they tried to take it up, failed. They were still in a downtrend. Yeah, I don't have the 3T line over here on this chart for some reason. 
I usually have three charts on my my uh, screens, and for some reason this one just didn't have the uh, uh, the 3T line in it. It's fun. These are the type of things that you want to look for is when they fail and they gap down, I tell you there's going to be more downside. Yoku had a, had somewhat the same scenario. Rounding top, gapping down, failure at the uh, 50, and gapping down again, more than likely coming down here to the, two, to the uh, 200. And RPTP, these are the type where if you can catch them through the support level, remember, that's why we want to watch to see what happens with a doji right on the uh, the T-line. If it opens lower, in this case, that would have been evident that if they opened, the market was opening weak, real weak today, and they opened this lower, same scenario. If it opened down here and it closed back up above the T line, you just close it back out. Yeah, I don't think I've got the three T line on here. Uh -oh. These are the type you kind of watch for. When you start seeing the failure there at the T-line, get ready for these big downdrafts. That's that's kind of telling you that the failure is coming. And now this, this is nothing more than just recognizing the patterns and knowing what the overall trend has been. Now in this case, it was the failure here at the 50. And so what's this downtrending trend telling us? Probably this is the bottom of that trend channel. That when it started breaking down, where do most people sell? They start panic selling at the bottom. That's where you can make your most money. Um, is uh, when, when people are really coming out. Uh, Stephanie, that, this, that a is that a close above the T-line? on the daily or the 10 minute? On the daily. Now, the only time I use the 10 minute is if I've got something that is huge, way up above the T-line, and it's way in the overbought condition, and we know it's exuberant buying, then I'll flip to my 10 minute chart and see when it starts coming back down to the, to the 10 minute T-line. That's usually when it's time to take profits. So the next day, would you close out? Oh, no. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm way up above the T-line on a big exuberant buying at the top, knowing that I'm too far away from the T-line on the daily chart, then I'll flip to my 10-minute chart and be ready to, if I see a sell signal and they start trading back below the 10-minute chart T-line, I'll take my profits. The worst-case scenario is they pull it back and bring it back up above the T-line. That means they're still going higher can always buy back in at that point. Uh, yeah, 1233, slow stochastics. Again, there's that slow rolling over. Um, we're looking for those big downdrafts. So this one looks very good, getting ready for that big downdraft. Notice that it failed the 50. There's a gap to fill. So if this opens lower, you want to short it because you're not in the oversold area yet. And they're probably coming back to fill this gap, which means at least you know if it starts trading down, heading for this territory, you're going to be at least profitable if you shorted uh, near, on a weak open. And then you just put your stop somewhere up there where it shouldn't come back up to that level. And Kang, notice what we had, kind of a little bearish left-right combo, couldn't get above this downtrending channel, gap down. We're sitting right on the 200. So if it opens lower, it tells us they're probably still taking it lower because they're not supporting at the 200. So again, this is mostly just being able to identify what the nature is or the uh, investor sentiment in a trend and then what the signals are actually telling you that would be confirming getting into a position.
Are these Chinese stocks? I have no idea. Probably Kang is. Uh, uh, and I, I don't really care whether they're Chinese or I just look at the charts and the best, uh, whatever the best charts are. As a matter of fact, I hate to say this, but too often, not too often, most of the time, I only know the symbol. I have no idea what the name of the company is or what they do. But I don't care because I'm more interested in uh, buying or selling a chart that tells me the uh, uh, they're buying and selling that uh, position. Oh, okay. Uh, no, uh, Frank. Let's see. They recommended K. Kroger, I would be buying this one. Uh, they probably put out a uh, option strategy setup. If it opens positive tomorrow, it's telling us that we're still in this uptrend. So at least we know it can move higher. First test is here. But we can see what it's basically doing. We've kind of got this wedge formation to the upside. And I think the other one was... S and SS. Oh, BRMN. Okay. Uh, SRSS needs to stay above the T line. He did have that big belt hold signal. So at this point, I wouldn't want to come back down or see it come back down in this direction. If it's still working, it should open positive and trade positive tomorrow. BMRN. Another good looking chart. Let's make this a little bit smaller. I would suspect this is going to stay in that 45 degree. If you would close out a stock, would close out a option, buy it back if it comes back. If you would close out a stock, yes. Remember the stock, yeah, you're analyzing what the stock is doing. Remember the option is just a method for buying that stock just to give you a little bit more leverage. So the option price or an option trade is nothing more than a mechanics of buying that stock with less money. So if the stock price isn't doing well, then there's no reason to stay in the option because uh, the option is the reflection of what that stock price is doing. Uh, hold on for a second, Vince. We'll get to everybody's uh, here. So with that, is there any more general questions on candlesticks? Oh, and I had a few questions uh, coming in. Is there any questions about uh, the training sessions at the uh, lake that I could answer right now? If not, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 3.8 seconds, do the next double line. How much confirmation do you need after a left-right combo? One and two days or more. David, that's the question that I get quite often from people, and the answer is zero. If you see something that's a left-right combo, remember, if you look at the uh, video uh, training of the signals and patterns quantified, the top two that I have on there is the best friend, the Doja Gap Up, followed right behind with the uh, left-right combo. And those are such strong, the reason we're their number one and number two is because they're such strong indications of a change of investor sentiment. So if I see a left-right combo, like right here, I know I can be buying immediately on positive trading tomorrow because the probabilities are pretty strong. They're going to continue that uptrend, that left-right combo. So uh, so that's the answer. And I, the reason I know the how to answer that so well is I get that question quite often. People saying, how, how many days does it take to confirm that you're in a reversal? And the answer to that is zero. Remember, the reason we're looking at the candlestick signals is that they are the potential reversal, and if they confirm the next day, 
pretty much tells us that that's what's happened to investor sentiment. That they did confirm that uh, reversal signal. Uh, INFI, if you're short, you stay short. But if it opened positive tomorrow, I'd close it out because that would tell me there's too much basing going on at this point. SWN, this one you can stay short. But more than likely, because you're at a doji in the oversold condition, I would use today's high as my stop. If it came back up through there, you've had an inverted hammer, a doji, you're in the oversold area. If they had enough strength to show there's buyers bringing it back up through today's high, I'd probably close out my uh, short position. You can always see what it does once it comes back up to the T-line. Diana Shipping, uh, you can get ready to buy this one on positive trading tomorrow. Remember, these uh, transportations have picked up a little bit of steam to there. That's why we still like uh, Nordic, because it's doing kind of a J-hook pattern. And DTO, right pan bottom breakout. This is the uh, short on the crude. Yeah, crude got limb blasted today with that bearish doji sandwich, fry pan or dumpling top. More than likely, it's going to be more downside. RCPT, just stay long on this one. Notice your inverted hammer started your uptrend. And Juno, Juno you can stay with as long as it stays above the T-line. It's consolidating. This was your message. Now we're just watching to see when the profit taking is over after this big gap up from a doji. When the profit taking is over, then you can start buying. And again, we got the advantage of seeing when that profit taking is over just by the green candles forming. Eyes couldn't get back up above the T-line. If you close this one out on the short side, you stay out. Uh, I wouldn't go long on this one, but I wouldn't go short. Until they, if they brought it back down through the 50 over the next couple of days, then they're telling me that they're heading for this gap down here. But you're in the oversold area. You've got support going on right here. If you covered your short positions today, move on to the next one. You shouldn't be long this one. And Zoe's, another one you shouldn't be long with it. Yesterday had the, uh, or Friday, Thursday, when it closed below the T-line, it had to open positive and trade positive. It looks like it had some positive trading, but the fact that they closed it back below the T-line told you the bulls aren't there yet. You want to be out of this one. And Q, yes. This one you can be, if you, well, you, have, you can't short this because it's below five bucks, but it is a bearish J-hook pattern. HDNP, all you can do with this one after that belt hold signal right here is stay long as long as they can't close below the T-line. And you'll notice what type of uh, in sentiment or investor sentiment was being created um, uh, with uh, the dojis. is isn't very decisive. Let's see, we did RGEN, RGEN, you just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. If you closed out on Thursday, you can be buying this one back on positive trading. Uh, John, I used to do a session out on the West Coast. That was when I lived in Houston. Um, yeah, I probably won't get, get to do a, one on the West Coast for a while, only because I hate traveling anymore. Going through all the security and having to be at the whim of the airlines. Ampel, kind of uh, indecisive trading on the pullback. I would still use the T-line. If you bought this based upon the scoop pattern, Morningstar, best friend gap up, you can stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. If it opens and starts trading positive tomorrow, I'd be a buyer because that would tell me, yeah, consolidation's over. We're still heading for our next target. G-Probe, 
really didn't do too much today. I guess they were showing how they came out with new cameras, um, small cameras, but nothing yet to tell you there's a reversal. Now, I'd watch for the reversal because where, does, where do most people sell? That's why you always look for that gap down in the oversold area. That tells you to start watching for, for buy signals. Ford, Ford just has not been able to get started. Once it got back up above the 50 and gap back down, pretty much tells us the current downtrend is still in progress. Now, we're still looking for this to get back up on a solid basis above the 50 uh, for our long-term holding positions. Right now, I wouldn't be in it. Uh, Posen had the morning star signal, but this is why you want to see where it opens. If it opens down here the next day, you don't want to be buying unless they can come back up and confirm that morning star type signal. This one you should be out of right now. First of all, when if this was a signal that told you the bulls were in control, the bears were able to close it more than halfway down that candle, and below the T-line, tell you the bulls aren't in control. Now, if you're short, you stay short. If you're looking to go short, I'd use this level right here, probably around the 10, 20 range. But if it came down through there, you know your downtrend is still in progress. Kiwi. Uh, another one that wouldn't be long. If I was short, I'd be leery of uh, this support level. So more than likely, I wouldn't be long or short this one. The NASDAQ, biotech, still a very slow, flat, steady, slow. I stress the word slow since I said it twice uptrend. Not any major selling off, but not any major buying at this point. Apple, still in this sideways mode. Right now, I wouldn't be trading Apple. There's just nothing there to give you any uh, advantage as far as what the direction is. IMGN, uh, another one that I wouldn't be long or short. I'd be more apt to go after this on the long side if it broke up through the, this little uh, resistance level. Nike, Just stay long, as long as it stays above the T-line. AGN, uh, another one that has no direction to it. If I was going to buy this one, I'd be more interested in buying it once it broke out uh, through this downtrending channel or that resistance level. PGNX is having a hard time getting started, but it hasn't been selling off. Still keep an eye on this one. We did kind of a doji day to day, which means you definitely need to see this open positive to continue that J hook possibility. Lily, stay long. That's a good looking chart, even though it's not a very dynamic mover. At least you can see you've got the classic going on your fry pan bottom, J hook pattern. BPT. They, they all, all the oils got hit hard with the crude oil prices down. I'd be watching because they've gapped it down in the oversold area. I'd be watching this in here. And the reason we're looking at it for longer term is because of the dividend yield. And then whiting the same thing. It failed to break out, came back below the T line. Uh, so we're not, uh, not ready to buy this one yet. Uh, we were looking at it up here, wanted to see it break out. Still, we'll be look, watching this one just because of the uh, magnitude of their position up there in the uh, Balkan field up there in North Dakota. MX shouldn't be in this one. PPP. PPP, not a real interesting chart. I probably wouldn't be buying this one even on positive trading, just because there's really no strong reversal signal. Deer, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to find a deer tractor right now. Deer, not very exciting because of the lack of magnitude of movement, but as long as it stays above the T-line, you stay with it. What is the best time frame uh, want to be? That's up to each individual. 
Um, let me see. Uh, Steve and I will get with you as far as the uh, scheduling. Um, so right now we're, we've had a few people sign up, but they've had to cancel, so we're, we're working on different schedules. So I'll get back to you. Oh, and that was another thing as far as that was a question about the uh, training sessions. If you've got a couple people or a group that you'd like to come with, Put it together, uh, I'll make accommodations to make sure that we're not overloaded in one session. Um, it was. And KR, uh, I'd be ready to buy this one. What type of options are taught in the options course? Oh, it's not the type of options, it's the option strategies, whether you're going to do buy the uh, calls outright, whether you're going to do a credit spread or debit spread, depending on the chart pattern and how much time is left before expiration. Oh, I want to be, I was trying to get back to you on, on uh, it depends on how active you want to trade. Um, I use the 10 minute chart as my bellwether. So if I saw this type of situation where it failed, the 50, when you start, I may have covered my position. Failed the 50 with a bearish engulfing, may have gone short. May have covered my position, gotten back short again, down here until uh, I covered the position. But remember, at this point, this is near the end of the day, that if I covered my position, I'd still be prepared to... to enter this trade again on weakness because near the end of the day we knew that if it didn't move very much it was going to have a big huge down day like that. Uh, yes, I will uh, let you know. Oh, that's what we're going to try. Now try to give you enough time, Steve, to uh, uh, make some, uh, some changes. Okay, a few more. Zixi. Zixi, all you can do is stay long as long as it stays above the T line. American Express, nothing that you can get real excited about trading. Whoops, oh, I better go back to Zixi. I may have goofed that one up. Uh, Zixi, you shouldn't be in this one. It needed to hold the T line, and it didn't. So I'd be out of this one. You can always buy it back on the next buy signal and it close above the T line. So we did American. Did we do American Express? Uh, you stay short on this one, especially if it opens lower tomorrow. Very doji sandwich with a gap down doji through the support level. John, I've looked at the Kabuda. I don't want to buy anything new because I'll probably use a tractor maybe two or three times a year, so I don't need to see something sitting there. But from my understanding, as far as tractors, usually the tractor is something that somebody's going to keep in good shape so uh, as uh, a farmer so that uh, it's always working so even a 30 40 year old tractor usually is in good good condition that's all right I guess that's about it for tonight. So with that, keep sending the questions about the lake. I'll be, be glad to answer as many. Um, just kind of a rehash. But there's a lot of people out there trading now very, uh, very professional, not professionally, but do it as a living based upon coming up to the sessions at the lake and getting a lot of uh, a lot of the details filled in for them. So with that, 
everybody have a good evening. We will see you bright and early in the chat rooms. We'll see you then.